Today we have a guest speaker to share with you, or guest speakers, to share their experiences of India with you. Um, Pastor Glenn Johnson and his wife Debbie from the Berean Church. Uh, they're going to share some of their experiences from several trips to India. So go ahead and let them take it away. All right. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good to see you. Um, try not to bore you. We, we've narrowed down our hundreds of pictures to just a few because pictures are worth a thousand words. But uh, help you experience a little bit through our eyes what we experienced when we were able to go over to India. Let me just make a comment. Debbie will, will say more about it later. This is kind of traditional, at least for the younger Indian ladies. A lot more of them are starting to wear dress, you know, American like jeans and t-shirts and all that. But that's that's called a uh, salwar, a little outfit, and a lot of the younger folks like to wear that. But she'll talk more about that after a bit. But we've been to India several times, um, and some of what we're going to say you've already heard, but I don't know what you've heard, so I'll just, just tell you. We, we were in the uh, state of Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, uh, is where we have spent most of our time. The last trip, we did fly into New Delhi, but then flew down to the south, so we really don't know anything about the country in between. You may or may not know, India is one of the most unique countries in the world because it is a country of countries. Virtually every one of the states of India speaks its own language. I don't know if you'd heard that before, but you cross, you cross a border, you're in a, like a whole other country. It is really, really unique that way. So um, it didn't matter to us. We always had translators, <laughs> but, but uh, it, it was very, very unique that way. A few facts about India that you may know already. Um, I don't know how they ever count, but a population of 1.2 billion on land mass one-third the size of the United States. So from California, say, to the western edge of Colorado, you've got 1.2 billion people. The United States has, what, three, 300 million some? So Everywhere you go, and that was my first impression, the first time we went, we got off the plane, it was late at night, but the masses of people just just there watching, you know, they didn't have any particular purpose being there, but we felt like fish, you know, on a fishbowl, they just standing there watching, and just masses and masses of people everywhere you go. Um, some of them will try to grab your bags right away and hope, hope a little tip not to steal your bag, but to help you carry it to your vehicle. So, uh, religion is a huge deal there. Uh, you probably have heard some of these statistics. It, it is 80% Hindu, uh, another 10% Muslim, and that leaves 10% of everything else. Christianity is about 2%. Uh, I'll show you some of the pictures of that stuff later on. It's a land of diversity. There are some areas that are very, very tropical. This happens to be along the Bay of Bengal. Um, and just, uh, I don't know if you can see the guys up uh, trimming coconuts out of the, the tree there. But some of the areas are very tropical, even inland, and others are, are very arid, desert-like areas. They eat with their hands, typically. Silverware is sometimes very hard to come by. We gave it our, our best shot to, to, to try to, to eat with our hands also. Rice and, and gravy and stuff is kind of tricky. You see the bottled water, and that is, that is key, because you may have heard all the water in India is contaminated. You, you cannot drink the water there. So fortunately, bottled water was very easy to come by. Sampling of food. Breakfast was the best meal. Um, you could usually get eggs, and they would make you an omelet. Uh, communication's always an issue. You'd say, I want this, 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 and they'll give you whatever they feel like fixing, you know. But, but it was an egg. Um, these bananas, little miniature bananas, very, very good. Sweet and delicious. Sometimes you can get toast, and sometimes peanut butter. Also a little bit of Nutella. Sausage you could find, but it was usually chicken. You know that Hindus will not eat beef and Muslims will not eat pork. So um, you would find chicken, you would find lamb, sometimes goat. Um, those were 
I'd like to say breakfast was the best meal of the day. Our first couple trips over, we're, we love coffee, and uh, coffee was very, very good. It was They grow their own beans there, but uh, the last couple of trips, they have gone to instant coffee, which was, was, was a huge disappointment for us. This is a, a little bit more typical fare for them. Heavy on the rice, um, they would have several different kinds of gravies that uh, you could put on, but everything there is influenced by curry. I mean, strong curry and, and very, very spicy. We could get a kind of a clear broth uh, soup that was, was pretty good and not, not too upsetting to our American stomachs. Again, a little bit of chicken, maybe. Uh, most of them don't have much meat in their diet at all. You'd see these machines out on the streets sometimes. They'd run sugar cane through there and catch a, a little cup for a little pick-me-up. You, know? you could buy a little cup of sugar juice there. You can see this gal's wearing an outfit similar to what Debbie is. This was a, a little dish I would eat quite a bit of. It's called idli. It's a little kind of like rice flour cake. And I always said it wasn't particularly good, but it wasn't particularly bad either. So, so uh, I would eat them, I liked them with honey on them. Um, I was kind of mildly scolded by someone who said, no, 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 you got to put this sauce with it, another spicy sauce they expect you to, to eat with it. Uh, you would find hard-boiled eggs sometimes. You can't see real good, but this uh, tray over here uh, pork and beans, you all eat pork and beans for breakfast, right? So that, there would be that, and uh, some potatoes, a lot of times, and uh, pretty good. Just several things you could get to eat. This little little girl, their, her parents thought she was very healthy, but that's a, that's a uh, plate of typical Indian food there. And in case you want to go to a family restaurant, there's what one would look like in India. You see them all the times on their menus, they'll say vegetarian or non-vegetarian, which means either with meat or without meat. You want to go to that family restaurant? You can't see it real good. We did find a steakhouse <laughs> in one city where you could sit down and get an American-style meal, baked potatoes, salad. Usually we could eat the, the lettuce and those kinds of things there. They say if you don't peel it yourself or can't boil it yourself, don't, don't eat it. You know, because everything there is washed with their water, which, like I said, is, it's all contaminated. But here it was safe. We got a good steak and stuff that was in a diet coke. <laughs> Um, again, there's a lot of agriculture uh, out away from the cities, and, and there are tons of coconuts. Um, I'm not sure what kind of fruit that is, but uh, this was a particular place that seemed to have fertile soil, and they irrigated as well. Uh, they raise uh, hot chili peppers. They were just laying out on the ground drying. Um, the facilities are unique. This is their toilet of choice, ground level. Um, kind of interesting. We found that toilet paper was hard to come by. I actually did travel with a couple of rolls of toilet paper because you just never knew. Sometimes we could find American style toilets. We just thought this was a very interesting name for a toilet. It's probably not pronounced hindware, but you know, <laughs> it seemed interesting to us. Uh, this is this, some water that we experienced in a hotel. This is one of the better hotels in one of the major cities. It was, uh, it was pretty grody, pretty gross. The, the, the manager of the hotel solution was just use cold water, then it's not so dirty looking. Like I said, water was contaminated. You cannot drink it. Here's some of the ladies and some of their uh, Clothing. I think Debbie's going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I'm here to kind of represent the women of India. And when I think of the women of India, I just think of them as very beautiful women. Um, they are much like us, and they love fashion, and they love colors. And um, also I think of them as very hardworking, because they don't have all the 
the nice things that we have today to help us with our laundry and things like that, which we'll get into that later. And like Glenn said, the sari is the more of the traditional wear that the women have. And if we have time later, I can show you, but it's just basically a big, long piece of fabric that they wrap around them in such a special way and it looks so gorgeous, and then they wear this little midriff top underneath. But, but the women of India are just so beautiful. And also, we talked about the, the salwar, which is more like the modern wear of women, which includes a scarf, which is the modesty thing that the women have. Okay? And also, when I think of the women of India, I think of the fact that they are not valued like they should be um, as people. And one of the ways we know that is in like the arranged marriages. Many times, maybe you've heard that, they practice arranged marriages and that the parents would decide ahead of time who you're going to marry, and sometimes you have no say. How would you like that? Yeah, it wouldn't be much fun, would it? Okay, and also they have practiced the dowry system, which in that country, it's a practice where the family of the bride pays money so to the family of the groom so that she can marry him. And so it can include anything from money to lands to a house to pay for all the wedding and even um, to uh, help financially with the rest of the family, with your in-laws, with your sister-in-laws, brother-in-laws. And many times they don't treat the wife very nicely and she just has to suffer in silence because that's the way things are in India. So it's very hard life sometimes for the for the women in India. So anyway, okay. <laughs> I should have mentioned oh, day. in regards to food, we were able to find uh, Pizza Hut. Oh, okay. uh, you were a little bit limited in what you could get, but but it was kind of a taste at home. And also we found a KFC, and uh, yeah. it was very spicy too. Their chicken was. It tastes like curry. But, anyway. but this is a, when I spoke about the women in their laundry. Um, many times they will go to the river to do their laundry. They don't just go and put it in the washing <coughs> machine and then the dryer. Um, and sometimes maybe they have another source of water that they do. And I don't know, maybe some have it in their houses. You know, I, I'm not really sure. But and instead of hanging it, sometimes they will hang it on the lawn or on the line. But a lot of times they'll just let it out to dry, they're going green in India, those women. Let the sun do it. it. It really is like stepping back into another time when you come to a country like this. Um, they're, they're trying to catch up. Um, the last time we were there, three of the airports that we flew into were brand spanking new. One of them had just opened like a couple of days before. So they're really trying to, to catch up with the rest of the world, but it, it's like stepping back into another time. Oh, and this is, uh, the men usually, how we would see them dressed is just like pants and a shirt, kind of like we would here in the U.S. But when they're relaxing, they wear the dhoti, which looks like a dish towel to me, an extra special dish towel that they put around them. It's kind of like a skirt. Do you guys like to wear it? Would be comfy. Okay, so anyway, and then it looks like they have a t-shirt on, 